The Unshackled Waves, Episode 64. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms, back for another review show this week, and I'm joined once again by my co-editor-in-chief of The Unshackled, Sukath Fernando. Welcome again. Thanks, Tim, and hi, everyone. Well, I best I think we can best summarise this week as a week of political violence. Uh, in the United States, we, we saw the left regress to their final deadly stage, which was now wanting to murder their political opponents. Uh, this was the attempted massacre of... Uh, a U.S. Uh, Republican congressman at a baseball game, which has left the uh, House Majority Whip uh, Steve Scalise in a critical condition. The shooter was a Bernie Sanders uh, supporter who hated Trump. Uh, now, the left have been inciting violence against Trump well, for pretty much the, the past year, so it's, it's only logical that there'd be some people out there who would act on it. And, of course, in the aftermath, we saw a right-wing activist, uh, Laura Luma, interrupt a, a play that was put on in New York of Julius Caesar, uh, which uh, depicted the murder of a Trump-like figure. And she said, stop, uh, pl- uh, stop normalising political violence against the right. Now, a lot of people have criticised her for doing this, but it was certainly the right thing to do and give the left a taste of their own medicine. Uh, the UK saw another terror attack this week, but this time it was from a right-wing person on uh, Muslims. Uh, It was, he uh, drove into, it was at Finsbury Park, uh, drove his car into uh, people uh, leaving the mosque outside the Muslim centre. He injured eight. He may have killed one, but that person might have died of other causes. We, of course, condemn this attack, but we understand why a person did that given there are constant terror attacks in the West that has made uh, ordinary people quite uh, quite scared about if they're safe in public, and especially since uh, our leaders aren't doing anything. So it was only a matter of time before this happened. And uh, uh, this uh, constant spate of uh, violence in the UK and terrorism won't stop until governments take the, the proper steps to counter is- Islamism and the Islamization of uh, countries. But let's start with the uh, shooting against the Republican congressman. Now, as I said, the uh, Steve, S- Steve Calise, the House uh, ma- uh, Majority Whip, it looks like he will be okay, but he's in a, a critical condition. There were uh, three others injured as well. Uh, so, uh, And I've been talking about the regression of the left for quite a while. I mean, first it was uh, just you know, stop being friends with somebody because you disagreed with them. Then it came shouting down people you disagreed with, uh, no platforming people, uh, and then it uh, became outright violence. I mean, we saw Richard Spencer be punched, and now it's murder as well. So I've, because I did the previous podcast uh, about the regression of the left, and I wondered what's going to come next, and we've just seen what's next. No, you're right. I mean, I think you... um... I think many people have predicted the fact that um, you know left will somehow degenerate itself into this murderous, violent ideology. Um, and I think you were right in when you were writing the, those articles last year re- regarding Madonna, regarding um, all those leftists who were inciting for more hatred, for more for more violence against right wing people and against Trump. Um, you know, you were right by predicting that you know this will lead to actual violence, like actual murder. And all this does is it um, you know it sort of legitimizes those violent desires. Now, we understand that, you know, any political side has violence in it. But what we're trying to sort of emphasize here, well, what, I'm, what I'm trying to emphasize here is the fact that the left is, it appears to be some sort of, or it, it, it uh, makes itself out to be some sort of peaceful, tolerant, compassionate ideology when the fact is the left has, the left itself is some sort of slippery slope. The left, the actual left wing is some sort of you know it's it's a degeneration you know because 
we can see that ultimately when the left doesn't get what it wants, even though it pretends to be peaceful and, and tolerant and compassionate, if it doesn't get what it wants, the left will resort to violence. And that's what we saw with the shooting of um, Representative Scalise in, in, in the baseball game. And that is a huge problem. And the thing is, you know, it, we shouldn't be surprised because remember, these are people who are affiliated with ideologies that killed tens of millions of people. You know, who ideologies are actually purposely killed tens of millions. Leaders such as Stalin, who actively killed millions of people because they, you know, because, because they, he didn't like them. Um, so we shouldn't really be surprised ultimately that this this left wing section of the spectrum is somehow resorting to violence when they aren't getting what they want. Well, well, the left, the reason, the way they justify the violence is because they believe their politi political enemies are evil, and so violence is justified against evil people. <laughs> uh, and so it's uh, so that's how they still justify that they're the compassionate side, because we're, we're, we're nice to innocent people, but our political enemies, you know, it's, it's right because, you know, they're the ones that want to destroy our society. That, that's the sort of thinking that, that they have. Uh, and that's why we've seen these uh, constant incitements to violence. I mean, on Twitter, there's so many people saying, I want a political assassination of Trump. And of course, there's uh, you mentioned there was Madonna at the Women's March saying she thought a lot about blowing up the White House. Uh, mm -hmm. Sarah Silverman, she called for a military coup against Trump. And let's yeah. not forget recently. Yeah. I actually forgot to mention it in the article. I can't believe that I didn't yeah. mention it. Kathy Griffin <laughs> holding up the, the severed head of, of Trump. Yeah. I mean, this is... I, there, there's been nothing, nobody on the right who's who's done this. I mean, there's uh, I, I can't recall a prominent uh, right wing person, you know, calling for yeah. the uh, yeah, beheading right. of Hillary Clinton. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, there is there is no you know normal right wing. Because I, I understand there are people who are you know towards the very far right sections who are saying yeah, we need to kill them, we need to kill them. You know, the, the only way to do it is to kill the left. You know, I know many, many national socialists, for example, and many fascists do actually support um, killing left leftists. Um, the thing is, you know, those are just a very small minority. These are normal lefties. You know, these are normal mainstream lefties. You don't see normal mainstream right wing people um, trying to kill other lefties. We, we don't. We want to win the battle of ideas. We don't want to murder them in some other physical battle um, because we are peaceful. You know, we are actually peaceful and we care. We have a thing called morality. Now, the left pretends to have a thing called morality, but it doesn't have a thing called morality. And they are saying that, as, as you mentioned, they're saying that we are the ones, um, or they're saying that they are compassionate because we are the ones who are being, who are being evil. Are you sure? Because you know you are the ones. The left is the actual force that is continuing to um, sort of Con that is continuing to make sure that the world degenerates in this path of decline by having these programs like safe schools, destroying our, our, our kids' minds, you know, poisoning our children's minds, um, you know, destroying their lifestyles, you know, spreading all these harmful things around, and they think we are the ones who are evil. Are you sure that we are the ones who should be, you know, eliminated? Um, but, you know, we don't, we don't really say that we want to kill you because, you know, we don't. We are not violent people, unlike you. And as I said, these are mainstream lefties, and that's a worry because mainstream right Righties don't do that. The fact that mainstream lefties are being so open about murder is a huge problem. Well, the reason why they've regressed to this stage is because there's been no consequences for them. I mean, the, the media constantly covers up for them. There's hardly any coverage of yeah. how violent, they, or if there is a violent event, they they Im imply that, oh, it must be because of the, the right-wing people there. Remember when the uh, Trump rallies turned violent? That's because yeah. only because the leftists came in and started assaulting people. Yeah, and the media wasn't very specific on that, were they? You know, they just... They just showed us pictures of a rally in in, in Berkeley, for example, um, and they weren't being specific that you know it was a peaceful protest, it was a peaceful rally, um, a free speech rally held by various right wing allies, um, and then it was the left, it was Antifa who came in, and you know began actually throwing gas bombs at us, began to punch us. It was the left promoting this um this this phrase, you know, punch a Nazi. The problem is to them anybody is a Nazi, um, so you know it's 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 them, and the media isn't. Doing anything about it, the media is the media is 
almost, um, you know, actually endorsing this, you know, because they aren't, you know, they're sort of, they're, they're a bit like the Walid Ali's for the left. You know, Walid Ali says, you know, he says we need to understand Muslims or understand ISIS and, you know, um, you know, hug ISIS. The, the mainstream media is a bit like that, but, you know, for the lefties, not for ISIS. Um, and that's what we are seeing here. So, you know, as, as you mentioned, various celebrities who are asking for, for these things to happen, who are saying, and that's legitimizing for the left, that these these are good things. These are role models for them. I mean, Madonna is is is, is an influential person. Lady Gaga, they are influential people. Um, they're in the top 100 influential people in every year. You know, the annual the influential people by I think it was by time or something. They're in it every year. Um, and they influence these people to actually use violence. And who knows? Maybe that is what they actually want. And it's also worth pointing out that the reason why a massacre was prevented is because because Steve Scalise is the House Majority uh, Whip, he had a security detail with him who, who basically ensured that there was no fatalities except for for the gunman, which is proof that the right to bear arm works is because yeah. he, he had the ability to defend himself, albeit through other people, uh, yet ordinary people... or us in Australia, we're completely disarmed from defending yeah. ourselves against lunatics like uh, like this guy. Yeah, I mean, imagine if uh, if an Antifa protester or an Antifa person from from Australia went in front of Corey Bernardi or Pauline Hanson or, or George Christensen or Andrew Bolt. Yes, you know, if, imagine those Antifa protesters back back um a few weeks ago actually had uh, guns with them. You know, that would have been horrible, and Andrew Bolt wouldn't have had any way of defending himself against that. Um, um, because thanks to gun laws, we can't defend ourselves. You know, people are saying that, you know, it is thanks to gun laws that, you know, the left, these lefties actually had the opportunity to actually shoot Steve Scalise. You know, they're saying that gun laws or the lack thereof allowed lefties to actually get, get those guns and shoot um, Steve Scalise. Well, the thing is, anybody can get those guns if it's illegal. In, in, any criminal, doesn't matter if it's legal or illegal, they can get those guns. If guns, if there were gun laws in America, um, then that, that Bernie Sanders supporter would have still been able to possess a gun because that's how it is. It doesn't matter if you make it illegal or legal, you can still possess a, possess a gun. Um, and that's what happened in Australia, in Sydney, you know, with, with the shooting in, in the Sydney siege, for example, it, illegal, but he still had access to them, which shows that gun laws don't work in order to prevent the actual problem. Um, and, you know, that would have been the same thing in the baseball game as well. So, you know, Thanks to um, a lack of gun laws in America, Steve Kelly was able to actually have security guards and they were able to take him down um, and therefore prevent other attacks or other deaths in that, in, in that situation. And I love how some leftists they actually had the nerve to call for gun control uh, after the uh, shooting. Where basically they were basically arguing that uh, our supporters are so unhinged uh, that uh, we we need to take away guns. So uh, because you know your 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 side of politics is so insane, uh, none of us ha have our guns. Maybe we just need gun control for for, leftists. for the left. Yeah, exactly. You know, just, just, just ask, you know, just ask a quiz, you know, have a survey, who would you vote for? Um, and then if it's a leftist, then just, you know, don't sell them guns. That's a, that's a good way. Um, because as we have seen, the left is, um, you know, at, it is in many ways a violent, you know, it's openly violent. Even I, even the thing is, I, I just mentioned fascists. Now I feel bad because even fascists don't go around like this. You know, they don't go around shooting left-wing politicians, do they? They don't. Um, and But the left does. So, you know, I, I I actually now feel bad for comparing fascists to these lefties. Um, so, yeah, I think we need to do something about this. And it just, you know, as you mentioned, ultimately it shows the degeneration of the left into its actual form, which is this. Well, I'm sure this won't be the, the last uh, yeah. attack we, we see from the, the left in America. I mean, who, who knows uh, how many more uh, leftists have been radicalized enough to, to carry out an, uh, an attack like that. But uh, th thankfully, there have been no fatalities. Now, in the aftermath of, of this, uh, Laura Loomer, who's a rebel media uh, reporter, she interrupted a New York theatre performance of the Shakespeare play Julius Caesar, which instead of uh, Julius Caesar, they have a Trump-like figure who is uh, brutally stabbed and murdered during the end. Uh, this New York theatre, it's, it's received 
it has received pub, uh, public funding in the past, so great use of taxpayer money. She interrupted yeah. the uh, performance to say, stop normalising political violence uh, against the right. Uh, and so she, she's she been ar arrested for that and, uh, char and charged with disorderly uh, conduct. Now, there's been a lot of debate about whether this was the right thing to do, but if she hadn't done this, then... Uh, no, uh, it wouldn't have brought media attention to what was in the play. I mean, this was the first time yeah. I, I heard about the play. So, yeah, it was it was totally, um, you know, the right thing to do. Oh, I actually, I actually knew about this play. Um, I think a few weeks ago, I heard that this was happening. I think I saw it on Twitter. Um, I didn't really pay, pay much attention. I wasn't surprised. You know, I mean, as as we mentioned, this is the left. I wasn't surprised. Um, why do we need a debate? You know, this person did a, the right thing by getting up there and saying, you know, you are just doing the most horrendous thing. You know, it's it's 2017. It's the current year, and what's happening right now is that things have declined so much that it's openly promoted. You know, political violence and the killing of a president is openly promoted in theater, you know, and the arts are important because the arts do influence people. The arts have are, are there as, as one of their purposes is to actually influence people and, you know, show them um, how to do things. You know, and the thing is the arts, the performance, the performing arts are being taken over by the left, infiltrated, um, and you know this now they're they're showing the killing of a president, and there there are it is indescribable, and it's funny, it's funny because Julius Caesar is meant to be um, someone who represented the people, you know Julius Caesar was someone who represented the people, um, and he was killed by the aristoc the aristocracy um, because you know they they didn't like him. It's funny because um, well I guess it's there's more to it than that, but that's the that's the gist of it, and it's funny because now the left. The left pretends to support the people. I mean, Julius Caesar would have been like the leftist back then, but the left now pretends to support the people. But now they are trying to take down a populist president who was for the people. You know, they they are the ones who are on the aristocrat the aristocratic side, ironically, and they are the ones who are going against a person representing the people by showing by celebrating the death of Julius Caesar and you know and in essence, celebrating the death of Donald Trump. Um, and that's quite hilarious. Again, shows the hypocrisy, shows the irony um, of the left, the paradoxical nature of the left by, pretend, by, by pretending to support the people, but then trying to kill someone who, who's there for the people. And the the left, they they always interrupt, uh, you know, right wing events. They you know they're always protest, you know, shouting down. I mentioned that in uh, uh, just before. So I, I think it's about time that uh, a leftist event was ruined for for once. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. deserve a bit back. I mean, I, I you know, so there's. People have uh, have said that oh you know they, these people they paid to go there they shouldn't have their play interrupted well you know they they're watching the depicted assassination of the the current president like I think yeah. that's worthy of of interrupting and I, I I really don't like this oh you know we need to take the moral high ground like that hasn't worked leftists don't play by the rules like do you really think that by us you know oh just leaving them alone the leftists going to say you know what the the right leave us alone maybe we should return the favor i mean they, they can't be yeah. reasoned with the left so this is the only way that you're ever going to get the message across by interrupting their events and if like if their events uh, all of a sudden they need lots of security for that that's the only thing that'll make them think twice about invading other people's events if they if they start to cop a bit back yeah, and you know, you, you mentioned the moral high ground. You know, Laura Luma, the the reporter, she she has the moral high ground right now. You know, she's the one who has the moral high ground because she interrupted a violent play that was depicting the assassination of an important person. And this wasn't a play depicting a normal killing. You know, this was an actual president who's currently living right now. Um, you know, pe people, the left is saying that you know we had um, you know uh, well the right, right the right wing progress showing Obama being killed or effigies of, of effigies of Obama being destroyed. You know, well we're not saying we support that. What we're saying is that you know we are against. You know, we don't we don't want to we don't want people to see. We don't want people to promote um, a play. That's actually showing the, the the killing in the most gruesome way of a president, um, and therefore I think more Laura Luma did have the the moral high ground because you know the moral high ground isn't about leaving them alone. The moral high ground is preventing these despicable acts um, in public.
And it's easy for, uh, you know, right-wing commentators like Ben Shapiro and uh, David French to say that, oh, you know, we should, you know, respect their right for free speech as well. It's easy for them to say, you know, si you know sitting in their, their comfy, uh, you know, National Review or Daily Wire offices, but yeah. you know, out, out, out in the, the real world, like, the, they're isolated from all, all this or most of the the leftist antics. So uh, I've I don't really know like they oppose that. But what's what's their solution? What's because you know have nothing nothing stopped the the left getting to this stage so far. Yeah, and you know I I actually don't think you can use a free speech argument because if you um if you are a strong advocate of free speech, that's great. But this isn't free speech. This is violence. You know, this is like you know we don't allow extremism. You know, we want to prohibit extremism because you know it's still free speech, I guess. You know, in a way, allowing um violent imams to preach the destruction of the West and preach whatever um any any hateful Quranic verse um that's still free speech, but that's not actual. That's not moral free speech. That should be that should be prohibited. That should be suppressed because that's violent. Same thing applies here. And this isn't. This has nothing to do with the concept of free speech. This is. It's despicable. It's a violent act being promoted, being endorsed, um, using taxpayer money, um, and it's it's actually it's actually influencing um, normal lefties, mainstream lefties, to go on and kill right wing people. So this isn't free speech. This is violence, and this has to be suppressed because it has to be stopped. Because you know, it, it's showing the murder of a president. What more can I say to you know to actually persuade people? And nobody was actually hurt by her running up on stage and yeah. uh, 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 saying saying what she said. I mean, the play was maybe interrupted for about five minutes. So, you know, all those leftists who paid like $100 to get there, you know, or, you know, there, were, there was just this brief, brief disturbance. Like, I'm sure that sure they can handle that. And obviously they needed to hear that if they paid money to uh, watch this, uh, this murder uh, of Trump. And, and this is also... Uh, a, pa a pattern of, like I mentioned, all the celebrities inciting violence against Trump before. There's also yeah. this is not the first time the the arts has been involved in glorifying violence against right wing politicians. There was a a, docu a documentary, uh, a fake documentary, I should say, in 2006 called "The Death of the President," which uh, uh, t uh, talked about the aftermath of the assassination of George W. Bush. There's a, a taxpayer funded play currently in Canberra, uh, which uh, glamorizes killing climate skeptics called Kill the Deniers. So yeah, the, the, the left have been, or the, and the arts community in particular, have been advocating violence against their political opponents for a number of years. They have, you know, you know that's exactly that's, that. It's not, um, it's not exactly a new thing. It's new. It's not a new phenomenon. It's, it's been happening for a while, um, and for people like David Shapiro to say it's free speech, it's completely moronic because you know these things have, these are these are new things. These violent tactics have been there for a while, um, and you know, as we as we know, you know, just because she's she's right wing, she gets charged, and you know, we all know that's code word for you know the the leg the judiciary being sort of against the right and for the left in many ways. Oh yeah, uh, always when like leftists disrupt uh, events, uh, even the ones who disrupted uh, par uh, Parliament, uh, Australia's Parliament last year, yeah. none of them get yeah. charged. They just get yeah. thrown out and then released without charge. But she's had to set up a legal defence fund, you know, because she's of the right. Yeah, they, you know, they they throw the book at her. But uh, I definitely admire uh, what she did. She she drew national or international attention to this play, and it's the only way to really rattle the the leftists. Like, you know, uh, you know, writing an article for Daily Wire saying, "Oh, this uh, violent play is terrible." Like, hardly anyone's going to read that. But if you interrupt the actual play, that's that that's what generates attention. So I definitely think we need more. Uh, yeah. More, pe more people like her, and uh, I think this is the only language the left will understand. Yeah, I mean, the fact that they've declined themselves into using violence alone shows that, you know, that this is the only thing they will understand. You know, um, if it came to a civil war or something between the right and the left, we all know who was going to win, um, seeing as how Bernie Sanders support. But it's analysts supporting males are, you know, cocks in many ways, as you would say, um, against the actual actual males who are Trump supporters. It's going to be very bad for the left. And you know, if they if they want if they want to have that, they can bring it on. Um, thing is, you know, I just ultimately I just want to say that I can't believe I have to actually 
specify to the left, specify to, you know, to, to my political opponents and say that this is an immoral and bad act. And I can't believe I have to actually explain to them why these plays are firstly um, nothing to do with free speech, secondly, immoral, thirdly, despicable, um, and fourthly, just sh shouldn't be happening. You know, the fact that they've gone towards this path shows that there really is no hope with these people. They are violent people and, you know, they probably are even at greater risk in the long term to the West than Islamic terrorism itself. Okay, so let's move on and talk about the London revenge uh, terror attack, which was, it was a, a, an, an attack with a, a van. It, it, the initial reports that it was outside the Finsbury Park Mosque, but it was actually outside an Islamic uh, centre. Uh, but the, the people were hit, who were hit were uh, people who were leaving that mosque. Uh, it was pretty clear to me uh, early on that this was uh, a revenge uh, attack. I mean, when they're, they're hitting pe uh, when a car's hitting people outside a mosque. I mean, you put two, two and two together, and uh, a lot of leftists have like tried to say, "Oh, nobody referred to it as a terror attack initially, but it was referred to uh, yeah. terrorism." I think pretty early on. Now, obviously, yeah. I said at the beginning, it's horrible that this happened, but it was entirely pre predictable because look mm. at what's happening in well, sp oh, not just the United Kingdom, but all over Europe. Um, just today in Brussels we had um, a, a bomber in, in the Brussels Central Station just today. Um, and on the day of the actual Finsbury Park attack, there was um, another Islamic terrorist attempting to kill police officers, but he was stopped. And there was another Islamic um, terrorist in Paris who drove a car full of explosives um, onto a police convoy um, and that exploded. You know, it wasn't a huge explosion, it ex exploded. Um, and I think it was it was a suicide bomb and just on that day two islamic terrorist attacks you know this is happening because of islamic terrorism this is happening because our leaders in the west especially in europe are unable to do anything practical anything effective about this um because they are either cowards they are either controlled by someone or whatever but they can't do anything about it and that is this 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 is inevitable you know this has been inevitable people have been saying that this will happen one day um and if the left wants to blame one thing for the finsbury park attack horrible horrible attack we know that um if the left wants to blame one thing Thing, they should be, they should be blaming Islam. They should be blaming Islamic terrorism because if Islamic terrorism wasn't happening, um, if Islamic crimes weren't happening um, in Europe, this attack would not have happened. And people, some people, have been driven to performing crimes themselves because there's no other choice for them than to do this because they are they are completely they are just sick of what's happening in Europe thanks to Islamic terrorism and they they are taking this path a path of criminal activity to try and raise awareness and that's that's what's happening and it's all thanks to Islamic terrorism so there you go yeah i mean citizens they weren't going to continually cop you know islamic yeah. terror attacks and you know just be told by politicians you know islam is a religion of <laughs> peace keep, uh, yeah. keep the borders open like there were obviously yeah. who are some who were going to you know feel you know so angry that the uh, that an event like this would happen and it was interesting that there were uh, i noticed in a lot of the online uh, chatter afterwards that there was many people who said about and i disagree with them who said said that this attack was good it's about time the the muslims got a bit of pushback ah uh, yeah um no i mean obviously you shouldn't be saying that um thing is ultimately we do say that we understand this why it happened we understand the motives it happened because of islamic terrorism i said that but that doesn't justify it is understandable but it's not justified um because you, know, you shouldn't be going around killing in is there are innocent muslims there are peaceful muslims we know that um you shouldn't be going around killing you know muslims um like like this i mean i know lots of people who are saying they deserve this they had they had it coming well maybe they had it coming in a, in a way but they didn't deserve it because they weren't all muslims are not responsible for terrorism. Islam is responsible for terrorism, but all Muslims are not responsible. We know that. Um, so, you know, that, that's obviously, we shouldn't, I mean, we shouldn't pay attention to that because, you know, that ends up, ultimately, it ends up being bad for our 
side of politics because um, now the left are saying that we are the terrorists, you know, that we are terrorists because we drew a car. Well, it's funny. It's funny because, you know, we were just before we were talking about how the left are the terrorists in many ways um, and, and hypocrites for being like that. Um, but, you know, no, it doesn't represent the right wing at all. There is no right wing Quran saying that you shall drive over lefties or drive over Muslims. Um, but there is an Islamic Quran saying you will kill slit the throats of innocent non-believers because they simply don't believe in Islam. Uh, and yeah, the, the left now claim that oh, because of this uh, uh, event that uh, the threat from Islam to the right is now equal. Well, we've just gone through uh, the, you know, the, the atta uh, Islamic attacks that occurred Immediate, immediately after yeah, this one. Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. look back at the past year, every attack in, uh, major attack in Europe has been an Islamic one. And, and it's funny now that after one attack against Muslims, the, the left are now suddenly concerned about terrorist extremism when the attitude before was just, oh, just carry on like before. Yeah, the leftist irony, again, the leftist irony pervades all these issues. Um, in fact, Diane Abbott, um, thank God they didn't win. Thank God Labour lost the election. Yes, Labour lost. Um, 318 is bigger than 262, just remember. Um, but, you know, it's, thank God the left, um, Labour lost the election because Diane Abbott, um, to this to this terror attack in the Finsbury Park, she said, you know, right afterwards, she tweeted, you know, this is a terror attack um, and we must increase um, security for, for Muslim, for mosques. Okay, but when the when the uh, Manchester attack happened, um, or the, sorry, the London Bridge attack happened, she said, you know, this is an incident. You know, right afterwards, she said it's an incident. Um, but for this, she says it's a terror attack. It's funny um, because for those, for Islamic terror, terror attacks, they're just incidents for them. And for these revenge attacks, they are somehow terrorist attacks you know, immediately for them. And that says something, firstly. Um, and, you know, secondly, you know, as you, as you mentioned, it's funny that the left is somehow coming out and saying, we must do something. You know, I thought we, we were going to be um, compassionate and tolerant, you know, not all white people um, or something. I don't know. But no, they, they weren't being like that. They were full on um, being hostile towards all white people, um, hypocritically, because they are the ones blaming us for being hostile towards Islam in general, you know, for, for blaming a religion in general for terrorism, even though that religion supports terrorism, read the Quran. Um, so again, hypocrisy, irony, in, in full show in, in this event. And of course, the, the only way to stop further attacks on, on both sides, uh, of, again, pointing out that, you know, uh, Islam, there is way more uh, uh, attacks involving Islam than the yeah. so-called uh, far right. But the only way to stop yeah. further attacks is to stop the spread of Islam in Britain and other Western nations. I mean, actually yeah. deport, you know, radical hate preachers, you know, take uh, terrorists off the street and yeah. then stop importing more Muslims into into the West. Yeah, well, the left doesn't want that. You know, Labour doesn't want that because they have this perverted interpretation of concepts of freedom and compassion. They have a complete misunderstanding of those of those terms, freedom and compassion and compassion and kindness, um, because they think it's compassionate. They think it's freedom um, to um, allow terrorists to walk around wherever they want to. They think you know it's against human rights to prevent terrorists from you know freedom of movement or whatever, um, because you know, the human rights of innocent people who are under the risk of terrorism, for some reason, don't matter to them. Um, Jeremy Corbyn, he blocked 17 um, terror, legisl terror legislation during his entire lifetime because he was saying that, you know, the West is responsible for all terrorism because the West is intervening. He has a point, but that doesn't mean you should block terrorism. That doesn't mean you should, you know, hold innocent people accountable by preventing them from having some safety. Um, but, oh, no. Jeremy Corbyn, thank God he didn't win. I'm saying it again, um, but you know that's what that's that was his opinion. Um, you know, typical leftist, superficial, regressive opinion, um, and you know, they don't want to do anything about it. And it's just you know, it's, it's pathetic, really. Oh, well, Theresa May, in her response, she's been uh, pretty bad herself. She's declared Islamophobia a form of yeah. extremism on par with Islamic extremism. Now, uh, of course, like uh, a lot of people have been saying online, you know, uh, w what do you mean by Islamophobia? It's pretty much anyone who is critical of Islam or you know, yeah. doesn't want to see the spread of Islam or Islamism in the 
in the West. And so it's she's basically saying that she wants to crack down on dissent to the current immigration and multicultural policies, which should really uh, send a chill down our spine that she wants to, because uh, she said yeah. she wants to crack down on material online. So is that mean she's going to crack down on like alternative news sites such as ours? Uh, we've already seen people like uh, Tommy Robinson, you know, being blamed uh, for, for this attack. Or will, will he be, you know, persecuted by, by the government? So yeah. that, it really looks, uh, and we've already seen uh, in Germany, for example, Angela Merkel working with uh, f uh, Facebook and other technology companies to suppress uh, anti-immigrant discussion. It's not like, you know, Facebook or, or Google yeah. need any, <laughs> any encouragement to suppress yeah. free speech. But the the aftermath of this attack, it looks like that they'll treat right wing views as a, a form of extreme extremism, which will, will really hinder free speech and our yeah. ability to actually you know change uh, policy in our in our nations for the better. Um, that thing, that announcement by Theresa May, I have to say, you know, it's completely. It's it's just pathetic. It's just completely disappointing, um, and it's scary. You know, I wouldn't expect, I never expected in my life to see a conservative prime minister saying that we need to crack down on Islamophobia. Um, you know, uh, who knows? Maybe maybe she doesn't know what it means. I'm hoping she doesn't know what Islamophobia means. Um, I, I think she does. I'm hoping she does. I'm hoping she thinks that Islamophobia means driving over Muslims on trucks, um, using trucks. That's okay. You know, ban that. That's fine. Um, but, you know, if she means Islamophobia as in the normal definition, the mainstream definition, which is, you know, criticism of Islam, um, criticism of its its um, distribution, its, its spread in Europe or in the Western world, that's a huge problem, you know, because we are, we will continue to criticize the spread of an evil and violent ideology um, in, in, our, in our countries, in, in the West, because that's what, we, because why, what else I want to do? I want, I want to, you know, hug them. I want to encourage um, and welcome a violent and, you know, anti-female, anti-gay, anti-whatever, anti-everything religion. Um, we won't do that because, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't think women should be killed for doing this or gays should be killed for doing that. We don't, we, because we are peaceful people, unlike them. Um, and if, Saying that it's going to be illegal, that is a huge problem. That's a huge blow to free speech. Um, you know, free speech, I, I, I remind everyone, free speech doesn't mean, you know, freedom to be, uh, say that you're going to kill non-believers. That's not free speech. That's something else. Um, free speech is being able to, is having the freedom to actually criticize other things um, and, you know, show them for what they are. And if that's going to be illegal, that is a huge problem. And, you know, this is something I expect from Labour, but we are getting it from a conservative prime minister and I'm hoping she has a misunderstanding of that word because if she's going to actually ban those criticisms, that's a huge problem. Uh, local people, they should have the right to object to you know, being invaded by foreigners and having the whole yeah. culture of their, their nation transformed. But the thing that really... Uh, that I've been reflecting on is that, you know, people, they're, they're seeing all these uh, terrorist, Islamic terrorist attacks. They're seeing, you know, the uh, Sharia law, no-go zones in, in their nations, like, uh, uh, of uh, oppression of women, gays, yet they they still don't vote for anti-immigrant party. I mean, Macron won in a in a landslide, and the the UK election there was no uh, really right right wing alternative. The UK yeah. vote had had collapsed, and if you look at the current polls now, Jeremy Corbyn's actually ahead in, in yeah. the polls. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, despite all the uh, Islamic terrorist uh, apologism he, he's done over the years, I mean, f well, what is it going to take for people to act actually vote what they want? Yeah, um, you know, again, I think there are people look at other factors for some reason, for some crazy reason. Like, for example, in France, we know that um, people who voted for Macron, actually, the the demographics, they showed that um, many older voters actually chose Macron. It was, you know, Marine's main voter base were actually young people. Um, so that just shows that, you know, those those globalist baby boomers, um, you know, they, they want to have that EU membership. They want to have you know, those open borders because, you know, that they, they as you know, they they are they, they are globalists you know they they want to have that, that freedom and you know that's you know they they're sacrificing they're they're putting at risk the safety and security of their own people um you know because they think 
uh, and there are many people who who are under the impression that you know the 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 right is somehow much more violent than Islam. You know, the right for saying that you know this is a violent religion is somehow more violent. The right for saying that you know these attacks are inspired by the Quran is somehow more violent than a religion that actually is violent, um, that actually does want to kill non-believers, um, that actually you know who, who's many refugees of that of that religion actually want to come and rape women. They say that out loud in trains coming into France, coming into into Germany, um, and, you know, they're not doing anything about it, they're not voting for anything, and that's a huge problem, and we need to be able to say that, um, and if we can't say that in the future, as we mentioned before, it's going to be a huge problem for us. Yeah, uh, my message for, for people who are concerned about, you know, Islam in their country, don't uh, run Muslims over with a van, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you know, I, I, and I know that in the, the previous uh, section we said that, you know, we should push back against the left, but, you know, we don't advocate murder oh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, against yeah. people. So, you know, if yeah. you are concerned, you know, uh, uh, affect change through the proper way, which is voting for a, a party or a politician, which will stop immigration. I mean, that's what the United States did when they elected Donald Trump. You know, they, they didn't descend into, uh, you know, revenge, you know, style attacks because of what happened uh, in Orlando or San Bernardino. They they made their views heard at the ballot box. And yeah. that, that's what these other countries uh, should do. They should be, um, and they sort of did. I think. I think they sort of did in 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 UK. Um, first with Brexit, secondly with this election, um, because ultimately the Conservatives did receive most um, most votes, most seats. So I think ultimately it does, it does show that these people. Um, voters actually um, do want to ha um, have change. It's just the problem was, was as you mentioned, um, there wasn't an alternative, so they just had to vote conservative. Um, but they weren't expecting Theresa May to say this. I mean, she was one who, before the election, said, you know, we need to actually you know, not care about, stop caring about the human rights um, um, laws, you know, stop caring about those human rights um, uh, where, where various statutes and various laws are made by the EU, made by all these organizations, because, you know, we must care about the movement of terrorists who are, you know, killing our people. She said that, and now she's, you know, degraded herself into saying that we, we must crack down on Islamophobia. Um, but, you know, the, the real solution is to, you know, not for, vote for establishment parties who are like that. It's a lesson. Um, vote for, in a peaceful way, vote for um, minor parties or, you know, other people who actually care about our countries, um, like Donald Trump, like UKIP, if they are running, like BNP, even BNP um, in England, the British National Party, or a anyone who actually cares about these problems. Yeah, well, it's uh, the UK, they, they won't get another election, it looks, looks like, for... Uh, yeah. another, another five years, but yeah, yeah. The, the UK is is definitely in a, in a in a dark place. But yeah, they. I I know that you said that like Brexit proved that there was uh, an anti immigrant sentiment, but yeah, as I said before, Corbyn's ahead in the polls now, and look yeah. like, look what his his agenda is. So it, it just doesn't look like things are going to improve in, in the in the UK anytime soon. It's one crisis after another. Yeah, because um, many people are under the impression that Corbyn is a bit um, anti-migrant intake. Uh, people are p people are saying that you know Corbyn actually may be um, supportive, secretly supportive of Brexit, um, and of course he has these social policies. I mean, we had we had the Grenfell Tower incident, for example, um, and you know in that that was one reason why he is getting popular, even though you know even the government was the one who built those residential towers in the first place. Um, but uh, thing is, if people are, you know, sort of caving in to these left-wing, this left-wing rhetoric, this dangerous left-wing, this dangerous, misleading left-wing rhetoric. Um, and that's, that, 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 that is a concern right now. And that, you know, the thing is they're ignoring, as I mentioned, Diane Abbott, you know, two, two tweets meant, showed her hypocrisy, her irony. Um, but, you know, they are caving into these to this rhetoric and, you know, that is quite a problem. I mean, the polls are the polls, so the polls aren't meant to be always accurate. Um, but, you know, it does show that people are sort of trying to move towards um, the left because, you know, as I said, people are still under the impression, even fellow right-wing people said they would vote Corbyn over Theresa May. They, 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 said, they, they said they prefer Corbyn or Theresa May because, you know, May is a globalist and Corbyn at least supports um, is meant to support protectionism. Is meant to, um, you know, sort of have some immigration laws. So I think that that was a point of contention there. Well, we hope and pray that 
uh, the UK situation does improve in the near future, but we, we're not optimistic. Um, yeah. that, that's all we've got time for for this week. So thank you once again, Suka, for being my co-host. That's okay. It was my pleasure. We actually didn't talk about Australia at all this week. That's because yeah, it's it's the final week uh, week of Parliament, and we've already talked. It's been dominated by uh, Finkel and Gonski, which we've already discussed on this show. Yeah. So, uh, if if people want to learn a bit more about those uh, events, we'll uh, list uh, list a uh, link to those previous episodes. Of course, uh, at the end of the show, the usual reminders apply. Please, uh, if you haven't already, sign up to the email list at theunshackled.net slash subscribe. Uh, please consider supporting the work of The Unshackled. You can be a patron on Patreon. We've also arranged some awesome benefits for our patrons, so make sure you check that out. Uh, Unshackled merchandise is now on sale at theuprightmarket.com, and there's a lot of uh, new products coming out now. There's there's a new uh, Saks Sadiq uh, T-shirt, so that's worth getting your, your hands on. <laughs> and, and of course, uh, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast. You can do so on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, or view the video version on YouTube. We have also opened up a vid.me account, uh, and I'll provide a link to that. Uh, so far, it's just got our videos from the International Men's Conference up there, but uh, once we get a better internet connection, we'll start using that account more just in case YouTube uh, decides to uh, censor us. And of course, don't forget to keep checking the unshackled.net on a regular basis for all the latest news. And thanks once again for listening, and we'll see you next time.